we've been talking about unsupervised learning methods. And these have been really about us constructing models that allow us to really understand the distribution of samples that exist in some high dimensional space. So far, the techniques have been more about projecting these feature vectors into lower dimensional spaces. In some cases, we've worked with linear projections. In other cases, we've taken nonlinear steps. And for a couple of the algorithms, we've, we've really been focused on techniques that allow us to take nonlinear manifolds, curves, surfaces uh, in, in space, and unwarp them into lower dimensional but linear type manifolds. These approaches are useful in allowing us to uh, better understand the nature of the data that we're working with. And we can also use these techniques to pre-process data that, that's coming in so that the subsequent supervised learning methods are more successful. And you'll experiment a little bit with that in uh, one of your homework assignments. Clustering is also an unsupervised learning method. The fundamental idea is that for each of our samples, we want to attach some sort of a discrete label to, to those samples. And, and we're going to make decisions about that based on how similar samples are to one another. We want those similar ones to have uh, the same class labels. The difference from classification is that there is no data that tells us what the correct class label ought to be. And instead, our clustering algorithm is all about figuring out automatically what these class labels ought to be. There are a whole variety of different clustering algorithms out there. And on top of that, each one comes with its own hyperparameter choices that we have to make. One of the critical choices that needs to be made is what do we really mean by similar? So how do we measure the distance between two samples? Or how do we measure the, the similarity uh, between two samples? Those are just complementary kinds of questions. Once we know how to measure similarity, there's also the question of when, when do we call two points similar enough to be considered to be in the same class? And once they start to move apart from one another, at what point do we consider them to be in different classes? And finally, there's also this question of how many clusters are there? How many classes do we have? For the algorithms that we're going to be focused on, the number of clusters is going to be fixed. And this is just one more hyperparameter. Uh, but there are other algorithms out there that try to be smarter about how they allocate clusters by looking at the structure of the data. In some sense, clustering really represents an extreme form of dimensionality reduction. We're taking some n-dimensional feature vector where n can be quite large and translating it into a single enumerated value. In the simplest approaches, and, and this will be what we talk about first, in some sense, we're identifying zero-dimensional manifolds. So these are clusters where there is a cluster center. And in some sense, we're projecting all of the points in the neighborhood onto that cluster center. At the end of this set of videos, we'll also talk about uh, another method that allows us to talk about interesting kinds of manifolds, where the shape of the manifold is actually determined by the local structure of the data. The two classes of algorithms that we'll focus on here uh, are k-means and, uh, and mixture models with expectation maximization. With k-means, we're using a Euclidean distance metric. We have a fixed number of clusters, and each cluster has really a spherical shape to it. For mixture models, we don't have a distance metric, so to speak, but we have a similarity metric that is based on a probability density function. In, in our case, we'll just focus on a Gaussian uh, density function, uh, a multi-dimensional Gaussian, in fact. With these approaches, still, we have a fixed number of clusters. When we have interesting probability density functions, and in particular, when we have uh, covariance uh, within these PDFs, we can actually handle not only circles and ellipses, but we can also handle uh, flat manifolds uh, that are one-dimensional, two-dimensional, et cetera. All right, so let's go ahead and start with uh, k-means clustering. 